do the quickie. Good evening, folks, and uh, thanks very much for coming in. I hope you all had a great weekend. I hope the weather was kind to you. So tonight we have Sarah and Laura. I didn't oh, well, call her Laura there. Right? <laughs> I didn't call her Laura there. Aye, but you got the point tonight. I've not got the point tonight. I've been doing this for two years, Gary, and I still mess up with the, the point. <laughs> and we have Mr. Gary Stewart from the Society of William Wallace joining us. Um, Good evening. If anybody follows our page, you know that we are teaming up with Society to do um, the Wallace Trail for Gordon Gray Park, um, yeah. probably September thing. Um, so, Gary, in and just tell us who the Society of William Wallace is. Have a wee chat, maybe some questions. If you want to pop a question in for them, feel free. Um, it's a Facebook user from the North Pole. I'm trying to remember who that is. I know who it is, but I just, you know, the name's up there, but I just can't remember. But anyway, thanks for coming in, Gary. It's, uh, it's good to see you again. Hi. Good to see you, sir. The three years. I'm not shouting. You're all right in my log. All right. It's good to see you again, Gary. I do apologise for shouting. All right. <laughs> hey, boy. Um, I hope you had a nice holiday. I did see the yeah, 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 it was. It was good. Thank you. It was, it was very, very good. Um, yeah. it, it, it's... Topless ones were a bit unnecessary of yourself, but you know, thanks anyway. I, th I thought I thought my, my James Bond impersonation was good. I must have been, yeah, uh, was, yeah, I first was I thought that was good. Uh, it, was it was good, mate. It was good. It was quiet. It was it was lovely. It was quiet. Um, quite a bit. Oh, it's, there wasn't the, e even the Spanish didn't speak that much English, so it was like like it was an old part of Spain. So I it was good. I quite like all that. The church said I'm not particularly. Religious type of guy, but uh, the church was beautiful. Um, I, I think I put I, I think I put uh, photos up of that as well. It was uh, it was stunning, absolutely gorgeous. Um, and I like I, I like all stuff like that. Do you know what I mean? So uh, I was good, mate. Was I, I thoroughly enjoyed it? Uh, I've been to Spain quite a few times and um, seen you know, some of the old villages and what have you. Uh, yeah. The old the markets in you obviously yeah. get coached it and what have you. And some of the villages are just you know. Outstanding, uh, uh, gorgeous. You know I mean? uh, so, the Society of William Wallace. Who's are you? Who are you? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> who are you? <laughs> basically, um, basically, the society was set up in 1912, and it, it, it was basically there just to keep the name of uh, William Wallace alive um, and, and to sort of just keep his name going, really. Um, also try and um, investigate a little bit more about the history, uh, try and get a little bit more information that we could possibly get from him. Uh, we also look to try and educate. So we do a lot of uh, talk, talks at schools. Um, obviously, uh, with the younger girl, uh, with the young kids now, obviously they get, Scottish, they get taught Scottish history at school. So from my point of view, you know, we get invited to do there. So, you know, it's it's good from the kids' point of view, you know, because I mean, obviously we've got weapons, we've got swords and we've got like, like replica swords, uh, the Wallace sword and all that. So obviously from the kids' point of view, when you turn up with all these weapons and they can obviously hold them and sort of touch them, whatever else that, you know, you can say, you can say whatever you like to the kids at that point because if you've got, the, you know, the, the they're captured basically, you know. So it's to educate kids. Um, we built built a couple of uh, monuments pretty recently. We've done one in Port Port Glasgow there, uh, which is where uh, where Wallace was, um, or legend states that 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 Wallace was was chained to a tree there. So we built a monument there, and we built um, a monument. And again, the tree's actually like it's like fallen down. Uh, so we're in the process of. Um, preserving that um, and getting a, a home for the tree itself. So that's something that we're doing to keep that going. And where the, where the tree fell down um, is actually where we built the actual monument. Um, and there's a little storyboard there as well. And again, it's to keep the legend going. Um, and if anybody wants to go up there, you can go there. And obviously it tells you, you know, there's a little storyboard there that sort of tells you the history of it. Again, um, the Battle of the Bell of the Bray, um, which was in Glasgow, uh, most people don't know that battle actually took place. That was probably more a skirmish rather than a battle, if I'm honest with you. But most people don't know that that took place. So we built a monument there. Um, so it means that people uh, sort of question it, look, have a look at it, and then obviously might go away and Google it. Um, 
and then find out more in, information with regards to that. Uh, built, uh, built a plaque in uh, Rilligan Church, uh, which is where Sir John Matisse agreed to betray William Wallace. Um, so we built, we put that up again, really just to educate people that, that in Rilligan, which is where it is. I think when we unveiled it, I think five, six hundred people turned up up for it. Um, and the amount of people that actually lived in Rutherglen like all their life or like for 20 years, whatever, and had no idea of that part of history. Um, obviously, with the walk for Wallace, uh, which Davy did um, in 2005, um, the 10 year an anniversary of that, <clears throat> excuse me, um, we decided to put a plaque up. Uh, if, you, if you look at the Wallace Monument in London and Smithfield, if you look at it there on the left hand side, there's a little archway and inside that there's a like it's a grade grade one listed building. It's like the oldest church in London, which would have been there in the in Wallace's time. So we put a plaque up there, um, just really for the 10 year anniversary of Davies Walk. But the, the other reason that that we went that we wanted to put it there is that obviously when Wallace was murdered, it was in 1305. So if somebody goes goes along, looks at the actual Wallace Monument and got 1305. Who really cares? Do people real, really still care about this guy? And then if you go and look at, at, at our plaque, which is 2015, um, saying that somebody did a walk from Glasgow in 2005, then it brings all the fact that, that the people of Scotland actually still still care about this guy. You know, we still you know, we still remember him for what he did. So that's why we put those plaques there. So, you know, there is reasons why we do it. It's just not a matter of just going to put a plaque up. There is reasons sort of why we do that. But again, it's funny, though, because, like, the, the moment we did in Port Glasgow, obviously, to get involved with, with, with sort of got, like, sort of councils and whatever else, that took us seven years to get that built. <clears throat> um, the Bell of the Bray took us seven years to get that, that built. And the, dealing with... The English history, um, historic uh, historic heritage. It was that we spoke to. Um, the plaque in the Grade One listed building took took us seven months to get that done. The guys couldn't have been nicer. They bent bent over over backwards for us. Um, we also try and get history back. So there's a letter that was on uh, uh, William Wallace when he was captured in 1305, and I don't know if the English. Um, uh, Q made a mistake, and and, and because we sort of knew they had it, but we didn't have any proof that that they had it. And somebody put it on their itinerary on their website with a picture of it. So we screen. Well, I did screenshot, and that's a bit more. That's a bit too technical for me. But one of the boys screen screenshotted it, and um, we then went down the road to try to get that letter back up into Scotland. And that took us that took us seven years to get that back. The letter's now back in Scotland. Now I'm actually waiting for somebody to come back to me to let me know if obviously with COVID, uh, obviously the last two or three years, um, they couldn't put the letter on display. So hopefully, it'll, hopefully it'll be on display sometime next next year. Um, so I'm just waiting for confirmation um, as to what plans they've got with regards to that. But again, you know, we had to get had to get Alex Salmon involved in. Christine Green was involved, it was the MSP, Fiona Hislop was the Culture Secretary, Dr Fiona Watson was involved. Uh, so, so it wasn't a matter of me just, just you know, like, we Gary for Glasgow going to queue, going, can I, can I have that letter back, please, mate? It ain't really happening, you know? So um, we had to um, we had to build a team uh, to, like, to get that moving forward. Unfortunately, they, they were all for it. Um, when the when we had the official meeting with the English historians and the, 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 the two Scottish historians that were there, which was Alan Borthwick, I'm sure, and Dr. Funa Watson, and I can't, I'm, I'm rubbish at words, uh, but we got, and, and the English had always said it, it was an English copy, it wasn't originally French, which is why they weren't giving us it back, because it, 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 it was theirs, it, it, it was an English copy. Um, so we we managed to get um, a letter writing expert, and it's a big long long word for that. Um, uh, who was a letter writing expert of the Royal Court of France? So he came over for the actual meeting, took one look at the letter, and basically said it's French. It's it is an original letter. Um, it, it's not a copy. And at that point, there 
argument of it's an English copy, you're not getting it back, was really blown out the water. Um, and then the letter came back up, I think, about three months after that. So that's the kind of things that, that we get that we get involved with from a commemoration point of view. Again, we do Leiden Hill, we do Wallace Day, we do Stirling Bridge, um, we do the Battle of Falkirk, which was uh, last week there in uh, Falkirk with uh, the Sir John de Graham Society. We do all um, with the Andrew de Mori Society as well, um, with Andrew de Mori raised the standard, so Wallace raised the standard down in, in Glasgow. Andrew de Mori raised uh, the standard um, up north in Ock, so uh, we, we do that as well. Um, the Society donate a saltire uh, every year to Ock, so they take the saltire down and they put a new, cell, a new saltire up every year. So that's that's basically what it is we do, really. Um, it's just really to educate, um, get more information and just keep, like, William Wallace's name alive um, is is basically what it is we're there to do and that's what what we do. Um, the building the monuments is just something that we've done recently. Don't think I particularly want to get involved with building another one. Um, the first one was an absolute nightmare for me. And then the boys proceeded to do another one and it was like going, why am I getting drawn into this? I don't want to get down this. It's just a nightmare. Um, but it's up and running. They're, they're, both, they're both there. Um, if you go on the Society of William Wall site, you'll see them. Um, they're both gorgeous. And I'm not saying that just purely you know, because it, it says it's done it, but the monuments are top, top notch. Um, they're really good. And the scary thing was Andrew Hill House. Um, it, when we first started, started doing the Bell of the Bray, it was Davy R. Ross, uh, uh, who's the, our, our ex convener who sadly passed away. So Davy basically started like to try and get the monument built. Davy sadly passed away. Um, and Duncan was the convener after Davy um, passed away as well before they actually seen the actual monument built. Now, Andrew Hill House designed the actual monument, and I knew that. Andy was not well, um, and I knew he didn't have long, if I'm honest. Uh, so for me, it was a bit like sort of trying to make it done as quickly as possible that Andy right. could see it. I, I didn't want somebody else that was part of the actual project not to see it completed. So fortunately, Andy was there um, and uh, seen it up, uh, which was good for me. It sort of, it sort of helped me. And the scary thing is that one of the sculptures... Um, uh, Chris, uh, they, uh, Andy and Chris both sadly died on the same day, uh, which I thought was actually a bit scary, really. Um, but I'm glad that Andy got to see it built. So that was that was more a personal thing from my point of view. So it was good to get it done, but it was good. To, I didn't want another person to not see it completed that had, that 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 had sadly passed away. And with Duncan, um, when he was on his deathbed uh, in hospital or whatever, I sort of promised Duncan that I'd definitely get it built for him. So there was a lot of personal things in there for, for, from me. Um, and with the Wallace letter coming back as well, that was Davy and um, that, that started that. So there was that wee bit of like getting something done and completed what your friend had started. So there was a little bit, there was quite a lot of personal stuff there as well. But... Um, but you know, from from the people of Scotland's point of view, it it was good, and it's weird. I mean, I'm quite an emotional type of guy anyway, so I was I can't mention who was doing the interview. Was we, we, we got invited to the, the the opening of it, and I, I thought it was just STB New or somebody. There was somebody I was doing an interview with, and I can't remember who it was. And I was crying throughout the whole interview because it was the. Lebec letter was there, the safe conduct letter was there, seven years. Um, and like to actually see it, like, you know, like like William Wallace has touched this, do you know what I mean? So there was all that, and then there was the Davy bit, and, and it was always crying and, and just going through this whole, whole in, in, interview. And, and at the end of it, she, she even started crying, and I think she got caught up with it as well. It was like got her in bits as well. So, um, so that was good. And it was weird because Alan Borthwick, who's like a top historian, in, in Scotland, and they, they, they'd done this. It was marvellous what they'd done. Um, and it was like a, like, a, like a big trail of William Wallace and, and, and you know, going through his history, whatever else. And Duncan and me, me were there at the time, and um, he, he's going around and going, so what do you think of this? And what do you think of this? And you happy with that? And, 
I'm going, aye, aye, aye. So we walked to, it's all funny, so, so we've done a bit, we've done the press bit and all the rest of it, and we walked to it, we're having a wee pint and flat going like, chuffed the bits, it was all done. And I said to Duncan, was he asking us our opinion there, by the way? And he's going, I think he was, Gary. I'm going, he's a historian, we'll know. I said, he's asking us for our opinion. And he was, he's going, right, is that dates right? Are those dates right? Are you happy with that? And I'm sitting going, can you believe he's asking us here? This is frightening. Um, so I was asking us, and then we get invited to this thing at the Parliament as well. And I was raging because the security guys were there. And um, so so we went in. So we've obviously like, like played it up where we like we, we had our gear on. Um, and everybody's like going, so do we take our weapons and all that? And I'm going, that's a Scottish Parliament. No, because you're not allowed weapons in the Parliament at all. And I don't think that anybody's ever been in the Parliament with weapons, obviously unless you're a cop or whatever. And um, the security guy came up to me and he's like going, where's your weapons? I was like, oh, I didn't really think it was the right thing to bring me. He went, no, no, we were expecting you to bring them out. We were fine with it. I was like, oh, I, I was raging at that. I was like, I was like gutted. I wish I'd brought, I wish I'd brought them out. Do you know what I mean? So, You'd left them in the house, basically. <laughs> aye, aye, because yeah, we didn't want to take them. Uh, hey, Charles and Warner, um, Basically, saying very on, we'll keep up the, the good work. Um, Thank you. But I mean, as you say, you're educating kids in school and what have you. And because Wallace still is, it always will be a major part of Scottish history. Yeah. And I think that people, I'm guilty of it as well, to be honest, until that Sunday we met up, like in the Bell of the Bray, campus camp, camp, I'll say it right now. Campus campus camp. Campus Kenneth. Yes. Aye. I was right. I can Google it. I can spell um, it. I just can't see it. No. Oh, it's Alex the Ghost Hunters. Uh, Ghost Hunters. Alex Doran. Yeah, Ghost Hunters Scotland. That's what it is. I knew I knew who it was. Obviously, not the first um, time, wasn't it? Because he's the North Pole. I don't know who it is. Facebook user. There's more than one Facebook user. Well, Alex says hi anyway. Hey, buddy. Um, <laughs> all right, so, I mean, I was walking in Glasgow and I've been to the necropolis quite a few times and I had no idea that was there. I think it's... So, that day we went and you showed I... me... I think it's, I guess, like everything else. I mean, I, I mean, the one thing, I, I mean, I get asked about Bray. I mean, we're going to Bray for 25 in Trim in a couple of weeks' time, which I'm really looking forward to because we were there. We were at Bray for 20, which was like, just amazing. And it's, it's, Bray for, as I said, people slag it off history wise and whatever else, but the, the, the bit which, which annoys me with it is that if you actually look in, in, and look at any film, Pearl Harbor or, or whatever else, Nobody starts giving it wahoo the history of that's not really right. Do you know what I mean? Nobody really goes on about you but Braveheart got absolutely annihilated. Now don't get wrong, history wise, right. yeah, it's not right. I mean, I've got no issues with that. But from our point of view, if we were going to speak to kids or or you were doing it an old folks' home or, or you were doing a talk on Wallace, you were ninety nine percent up because everybody watched Braveheart anyway. So they knew who, who William Wallace was. So at that point, it was just it was a matter of then educating and go, well, actually, that didn't happen, this bit happened, this bit happened, and, and sort of whatever. But it made it, it made their job easier, as I said, because everybody knew. Um, and, and I think when Braveheart came out, I mean, Davey, our ex-convener, his, his book, which is on the trail of uh, William Wallace, that was number two in the Scottish charts. Mm -hmm. uh, so people went out and bought books on William Wallace when Braveheart came out. So... Whether the history part of it's not right is by the by, it got people knowing about it, and then people then went out and bought books. So they, so people were reading the true story of Braveheart, and I'm a, it, it's weird. I can't remember the name of the films. Um, I think one of them is the Days of Jacksonville. I think it is, um, which is to do with the United Nations forces that were in Africa some somewhere. It was an Irish uh, battalion, and they end up surrendering but they fought like for seven days against like amazing odds I'd never heard of that didn't know anything about it the United Nations basically threw them 
under the bus, basically. Um, and the events have got out, and I think they've just they've just got a pardon or an apology just a couple of years ago there. And I went and obviously read the true the true story of it. But without the film, I wouldn't have known anything about it. And there's one which is, I think it's the Danish resistance during the Second World War, oranges and lemons, I think it's called, something like that anyway. And I, again, I've I've went to, to find out more, and I didn't even know that they ha had a resistance, if I'm honest with you. You know, when the film was really good, historically wise, again, the film's not particularly great because obviously I went, I went to find out, out, out about it. But with, without watching that film, I would never have known about it. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? And I think with Braveheart as well, and I, I did a, I did talk for, it was an Australian channel, and I think the thing with Wallace is that no matter which country you're from, everybody's got in their history a William Wallace. Do you know what I mean? You know, everybody's got somebody that, 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 that you know, that for, for their country's independence, whether it's Australia or Ireland or, or everybody's got that. So anybody watching it, whether you're Scottish or whether you're not Scottish, they can relate to what William Wallace was doing because they can think of it from their own country's point of view. So I think that's why the film was such a massive hit because it, it touched, whether it was just Scotland, obviously, but it touched people's own hearts as their own countries, like like fight, fight, fight to get freedom, whatever. So I think that's why the film was so good. And I mean, unfortunately, from my point of view, I mean, we were in Moldova, it was, watching Scotland and my two friends didn't have tickets for the game, so we went up to the ground to get tickets, and this this Moldovan guy started shouting, freedom, whatever. And my friend went up to speak to him, and he's going, ah, Bravehearts, freedom, William Wallace, I love it, watch Braveheart, love it, whatever. And my mate's going, oh, if you want to know the like the proper story, my, my mate's right, right clued up on it, so it, 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 you bring him over. So we got the tickets for my two friends, and Andy's going, Gary, come over here, the boy. The boy wants to speak to speak to you, and um, I says at half half ten in the morning, um, and the guy owned a pub. Do you know what I mean? He's like, Can you come into my house? You come in, you come in, and a bottle of vodka get get put down, four glasses, and the vodka get poured, and we're like, I'm looking around, but I'm expecting Iron Brew or Coke to come out. <laughs> no, no, you drink straight. I okay, big man. Hey, bother. Right, you talk, you keep talking. Oh, for yeah, okay. line, hey, bother. Um, then he then he got his pal and he, he phoned his mate. He came up, so his pal came down and his pal, the wee kid. The wee kid was about eight, and I'm not a big guy, so I'd got, I, I'd take my Piper's jacket off and we took on the wee guy and got a, like a, get, get my jacket bite hat on the wee guy as well. So so the wee guy was like, he was loving it. Um, and then the, the bottle get finished, then we on another bottle and he said, You keep talking, this is great, you keep talking. And it, I, I'm looking at my clock and I'm going, listen, big man, we need to go. We, we, we need to go and meet our friends here. And he's going, my friend will take you there. Don't worry about it now. To give you the back the back street of Moldova is that the police were taking you up dark alleys with AK-47s at night going, geez, your money. So, right. so but it was like, you had to watch what you're doing. You know what I mean? So, um, so... I'd finished the story. Uh, it was the guy was all over me, he's curling me arse. Brilliant, thank you, thank you so much. Right, my friend will take you. So we're blitz by this point, right? Is it what a glow? We're really drunk about a bottle of half a straight vodka between us. You know what I mean? So we're pretty drunk. So we walked out, and the guys take us down to all these wee dark alleys, right? So I've sobered it up very quickly. I'm going to Andy, going, we're getting done here, mate. <laughs> There's no dice of us. We're getting, we're getting tanned here. So I was sitting getting there, right, here we go, right, and he comes out here, like, start, I'm throwing a punch anyway, anyway I feel, I, I feel better. And he, then he stopped at this building, right, and I'm going, this is no the pub. And it's and it's a dentist, basically, boom, he stopped, he stopped us off at this dentist. So he's, he went, you, you wait, you wait five minutes. So he's away in, and he comes back out again. And all these nurses come out, and like, people get their teeth taken out, they all come out, he went, we take photo. So he, he owned the dentistry. He he was the guy that actually owned it. So he so I know for a fact that that it, so there's a photo of the Tartan Army with all his colleagues and him and whatever else in this dentist because he sent me a photo. He sent me a photo of it. It's metal. And then he took us. Then he took us on the pub that we had to go. You know that. Do you know what I mean? So the things where the, I mean, I the one thing which I find with Wallace and obviously he was. He was murdered in 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 thirteen oh five, so a little bit seven hundred odd years old, old whatever. But 
the amount of people that I've actually met because of my love for Wallace, or because of what I get involved in with regards to Wallace, that's the bit which I find scary. You know, I've met people that I, that you would never that you would never have met, and I've, I've got some really, really good good friends through it. That if it wasn't for a person that died seven hundred odd years ago, I would never have met met these people. You know, I, like, you, you're in the same with yourself, Scott. I would never have met you if it wasn't for the fact of William Wallace. And I think that's the, I think that's the scary thing with it. You know that, that, that this guy, and even even if you look at the establishment, obviously we get involved with a lot of MPs and sort of councillors because of what we do with building monuments and things like that. The establishment is still scared, scared stiff of, of William Wallace. You know, seven hundred odd years later, they're petrified of him. You know, and you know it's like I'll build them on. A monument, a William Wallace. No, too keen in that son. That's too Scottish. That might get there. That might get them up and rallying and oh, you know, we can't go down that route. You know, so I think that's the that's the scary thing about it. You know, we you know we're all involved and we've all met through a guy that basically died seven hundred odd odd years ago. As it's quite a a weird one. Um, for the, the American version of Brave Heart. That's Brave right. Brave. Mel Gibson, same actor, same theme, but American Civil, Civil War. War. Tried and tested formula. But as you say, Gary, it's, it's amazing the amount of people that you actually do meet. You know, and you see, you met them through the walls. We've done through paranormal. I yeah. don't know the, the, his, <clears throat> the history. Set. What? <laughs> You used to want kicked off the panel. No. <laughs> um, I you're pretty, yeah, I'm forgetting what I was going to say. No, you're putting me right off. So, yeah. Um, aye, it's amazing the amount of people I see yourself and the amount of people that we've met since we started doing this has been unbelievable. And it's yeah. been, we would never have met in daily life. Yeah. And you I know? think I think I think that's the, the I think that's the you know if, when you sit down and, th and think about it really and you know and it's. I mean, obviously with Braveheart, I know quite a lot the actors, whatever else, and you know, I've, I've sort of I mean, like David O'Hara, I, I sort of know pretty well, and uh, Mary Calvi and that, and uh, I've met Brian Cox once, and you, I think sometimes my wave goes off or not sometimes, like, you, do you know what I mean? And I, I'm not really one for going, oh, I, I know Joe Bloggs, or I know this, or I know that. I mean, when we met David and so David was telling us, like, stories. he's a lovely guy, by the way, absolutely wonderful mm -hmm. guy. Just, he's nuts, absolutely. The guy's mental, but in a really, really nice way. And Duncan and me were sitting speaking to him. And the, the one thing I liked about him is we get invited to do a school um, in Glasgow. And what they'd done is, like, each class had, like, a like a room. Um, and, and it was all to do with Scottish people and... and um, had to go like a famous Scottish person. Who do you want? And that's the name of your your class, basically. So William Moore's was one of them, uh, which is why she uh, the teacher got got in contact with us. And so we turned up. Uh, and when I was speaking to her, I said, "Look, I, I, I might be able to get David O'Hara to come along." I said, "But I'm not too sure whether the kids would know who he is because he, he looks totally different to what Stephen was in Braveheart, whatever." And the teacher's going, I don't care about the kids. You get David O'Hara here. I love him. I was like, okay, then. Well, so I, I've emailed David and said, look, we're doing a talk at school. Um, they're doing this, blah, blah, blah. Could you come along? He went, Gary, great. Anyway, when is it? Um, so David turned up. And uh, at the end of it, the, one of the other um, classes was J.K. Rowling. Um, so Harry, uh, David was in Harry Potter as well, apparently. Uh, so he did. So, so, so he stepped in for them as well because obviously he was in Harry Potter with J.K. Rowling. He obviously did the bit for us, and he was speaking to the teacher at the end of it, and she and he's like, oh, "Why didn't you get in contact with J.K. Rowling?" Then? And she went, oh, "I tried to get in contact, but I couldn't get in. I, I, I couldn't get in contact with her at all." And he went, "You should have said to me, she's she's my pal." Do you know what I mean? And it, the teacher just looked at me. She went, "Yeah, yeah, she's my mate. I've got to, I could have phoned her for you." <laughs> You know, and then he was telling Dunk, he was telling Duncan and me stories, and he was talking about like top film <laughs> directors in Hollywood, and he's talking about Mel Gibson and stuff as if like it's us talking about 
like your wife, I do you know what I mean? But, but he wasn't like name dropping, that's just his mates. Do you know what, do, do you know what I mean? Aye, you know, that's that, that's the people that I, you know, but obviously, if you were listening to me, it was like, oh, goodness sake, how many famous people can you mention in a, in a five minute conversation? You know, it was amazing. And when we went <laughs> to Braveheart, to Braveheart 20, so as I'm saying, I, I don't really go down the route of, I, I know Joe Bloggs and I know him or whoever else. Um, so it's not something that we really do. So um, so we're at Braveheart 20. So we've done all the bit and then the film's on in, in front of the castle. So Trim Castle, basically, if you watch Braveheart, York Castle in the film is Trim Castle, which is why it's held in Trim, basically, in in Ireland. Um, so they've got a big, massive truck, this big, massive screen. There was 950 people there watching it. Watching it. So it was weird watching it and the film and the actual castle that's in the film was actually right behind where you were watching it. Um, and then so, so, Mel, so Eric, the guy that organises it all, he's come up and went, I've got a wee surprise for you, but I can't tell you. So, ah, okay, then. I, yeah, it's no problems, buddy. Uh, so, so, so before it starts, Mel Gibson comes on the screen and he does a little like blah, 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 blah. Uh, and I'd just like to welcome Clan Wallace boys that have come over for Glasgow, obviously, especially for this event and all that, right? I'm going, oh, God, yes, Mel Gibson even knows who we are. So, um, so there's an Irish person sitting beside me, so I'm, I'm just like, at you and I'm going, that's, that's, that's us he's talking to about us, that's us, by the way, just in case you don't know. Um, and that's the only time I've ever done it, but I was actually shocked that he actually mentioned us, do you know what I mean? It was just quite funny, it's like, Mel Gibson's talking about us here now, do you know what I mean? So, it's good every day, somebody like Mel Gibson, you know, Mentioned, it's <laughs> you know, quite scary actually. And I, I suppose I, you would get um, quite a wee, a wee buzz with it, you know. No, because you know, oh, I know, you know, it's no big deal. It's just, you know, Mel Gibson. Aye, 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 it was, aye, it was, 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 I have a couple of questions for you about Wallace, um, because there's two castles nearby, we in Kilmarnock, right? There's two <laughs> castles nearby us that are supposed to have ties to William Wallace, right? Now, we don't know if it's true or not, and I wanted your input on it, mm-hmm. right? One is called, one is a Drossy Castle, which That's is going to maybe be on the on the coast, basically. Yeah, yeah. That's supposed to have ties to Wallace, but we don't know yeah. whether that's true or not. As I said to you uh, um, the first time that we started speaking, Scott, uh, legend states, so the Drossing bit, as far as I'm aware, the legend is there. Um, so, yeah, that bit's true. From my point of view, and our, our my previous convener or the previous convener, Duncan, what Duncan said, and I, I, I've always went went with this now, is that if, if it comes from somewhere, you know, somebody's not just made that up for a laugh, you know, it's not as if like 700 years ago, we had a tourist industry, you think this, this William Wallace guy's a good guy, somebody old Mel Gibson, I think his name, he'll, he'll bring a big, big film out, right? So, We'll start this wee story. So in 700 years' time, the tourist industry can use that. You know, and you, you know, we can start marketing William Wallace because he'll be a big guy. So that's obviously not... Real. So to me, there's always there's always something there. You know, this this story just didn't... Somebody did, didn't make it up. You know, mm-hmm. you know, don't get me wrong. If you, tell a, if you tell a story or you tell a joke to one person, tell somebody else, tell somebody else, tell somebody else... Tell somebody else. By the time it gets to the fifth guy, it might be a little bit more exaggerated right, than right, what it was when it right. first started. But the original part of it, you know, is there, if that makes sense. So to me, there's always there's, there's always something there. You, you know, as I said, nobody just made it up because we've got a tourist industry that we can use it in the future because that didn't happen. You know, and you know, so to me, for Adrosa Castle, as far as I'm aware, yes, it's true. As I said to you, the problem with with that we've got with Wallace, which frustrates me a lot is that, that a lot of what we talk about is legend states. You know, it's like Camp of Kenneth, we're talking about like sort of Wallace's arms there, uh, legend states. You know, we, you know, we don't know if that's 100% true. 
Um, as I said to you before, with the Battle of the Belle of the Bray, I could probably give you 40 historians. It'll tell you the battle happened. I could probably get you another 40 historians that probably tell you that it didn't happen because there's no proof. So, and I know speaking to Dr. Fiona Watson with 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 regards to, to, to sort of Wallace is that we're we're lucky to a certain extent because we're so, so we're not academic historians, if that makes sense. You know, we've not got PhDs that after name or sort of enough like that. Whereas the likes of Dr. Fiona Watson, two and two need to make four. And if it doesn't make four, she can't com she can't comment on it because as far as she's concerned, it's not true. Whereas for us, we can go two and two makes four and a half. Yeah, we can go with that because legend right. states and it, it sounds good. But because we're not got a reputation, I don't mean a reputation, but obviously our job doesn't depend on sort of what what we say. Um, whereas for Doctor Freddie Watson and an, an academic historian, they can't they can't make they can't go legend states. They can't say that it, it, two and two does they make four? We can't talk about it. It it basically didn't happen. So from our point of view, we've got a little bit license that we can go a little bit more. I mean, don't get me wrong, we do try and go down the route and, and go through Eng English Chronicles and, and sort of whatever, like to try as much, because the English kept sort of better records than we did, basically. Um, we were more like an oral thing, you know, where people, speak, people, like people spoke about things and it sort of kept going... From that point of view, obviously, Blind Blind Harry's book then came out as well. And the scary thing with that is, Blind Harry's book uh, is the second biggest selling book in the whole of Scotland behind the Bible. The only one that outsold it's the Bible, uh, and, and, and that's as far as I'm aware. is is still is still the case. So we're lucky. So Adrossan Castle, yes, that that as far as I'm aware is true. Yes, the, the other one is Castle is. As far as I'm aware, yes. The, the, so again, if, if we get involved with Kilmarnock, then <laughs> we're getting involved when was Wallace born in Ellerslie, was he born in Eldersley? <laughs> Don't really want to get involved with that. That's when he start that's going to start a riot. Um from our point of view, it's Eldersley in Paisley is where he was born. Um, Eldersley, looking back on the records, um, Eldersley wasn't even in a map. But when Wallace was was brought up, Eldersley came in later. So that's yeah. why, from that point of view, I, again, we can't prove it, you know, but we're 99% certain that it was, it was Eldersley. Uh, but... You know, there is a lot of um, history in Air Kamarni, you know, that area, sort of Salt Coat Seaway, um, that Wallace was there. You know, so from Craigie Castle point of view, yeah. Um, I, I, again, legend states, we've got no documental, documental proof to prove that, that he was there. Um, mm -hmm. We know he was, that, that Wallace was at Loudon Hill. Um, and if you ever get a chance to go there as well, because that won't, won't be far away from where you are. Um, uh, we've been to Loudon Hill, we were there about uh, a month, a couple of months ago, we took uh, a drive to uh, a bit of walking TikTok, um, at Loudon Hill, because the battle uh, was actually in the fields, it wasn't on the hill. That's right. It was in the fields. I think, and, and, and I think the scary thing for me um, is Loudon Hill's two, two battles that we won. Now, for... A lot of the commemorations that we do is the time we get beat. <laughs> do you know what I mean? So it's actually quite good to watch that we've actually got two two victories where Wallace won and, and sort of Bruce and Bruce won one as well. So um I always find that I was I always have a wee we quite chuckle going to Loudon Hill going, this is two victories for us today. This is I know you're right. This is one we're going to we actually won this one, so this is one one up for us, you know. Uh, you know, whereas sort of going to Falkirk and uh, you know we obviously get beat there, but see, I find Falkirk strange as well, where you know, we, we built a monument there as well, the actual cairn in Calendar Park. That was a society that that built that built that. Um, so John Stewart 
is in the church, um, as is Sir John de Graham, which, which is um, yeah, yeah. William Wallace's right hand man, his, his best mate, um, who obviously died at the Battle of Falkirk. He's there. And, and the amount of people in Falkirk that don't actually even know that he's there, or, or the, there's that bit of history in, in Falkirk. Then, if you come out of the church and you go across to the arcade, and if you walk through the arcade and walk right to the end, and there's um, like little stairs which yeah. are going down, and if you go down them, um, there's three stained glass glass windows there. Mm -hmm. um, one is uh, Bonnie Prince Charlie to John Drummond, and oh god, the guy's name was in it just came out to me there. I can't mind the last guy's name, but Sir John Murray. Uh, Andy Murray, it's not Andy Murray, what's his name? I can't remember it anyway. But the actual, the actual stained glass windows are unbelievable. They're gorgeous. And again, the amount of people in Falk that, that, that will go to that shopping centre all the time and not just go that one step further and go down and actually see them there. They don't, they don't know they're there. Now, I don't know I... from Falk, I don't know from Falkirk's point of view whether they've done that intentionally, so in case somebody smashes them. It could be that, I suppose, but I would like to say that there should be some sort of sign posted there that you say, look, at the end, this is here, because they are amazing. They're, they're absolutely gorgeous. They're, they're just stunning. Um, and I think it's, as I said, like in Rutherland as well, like where um, where Wallace, where Minteeth agreed to betray Wallace, and his mum and dad stayed in Rutherland all their life, and, and they didn't even know that. They didn't even know that. You know, and it, I just think it's scary that around about people, you know, history around about where people are, and most people don't even know. Do you know, right. you know and, yeah. and I, I, it, it's scary, but I also think it's it's weird as well, because if you walk in Glasgow, now most people that walk, you're going either shopping or, you, or you're going to your work. So you don't, you don't look about, you just head down and just walk. You don't actually look up at all. And if you actually look up at some of, the architecture in Glasgow, some of the tall buildings, it's absolutely stunning. But most people don't. Most people don't even look at them because they've got their own. They've got their own wee life as to what they're doing, and it's just right. I need to go from A to B. Right, I'll go that way, and I'll look down, and I'll just keep walking. So, I, I think history is is it's scary. There's history everywhere, and it's just a matter of whether you want to go and look out for it, or, or sort of whether you don't. I mean, I know I can't remember. I can't remember what this is, but I know David was was doing research for one of his books, and legend states again. Um, and it was a stone that, that David was looking for. I can't remember where it was. It uh, off offhand, and it was in the middle of nowhere. You know, the, there's a pub there, but it's it's like just just like like mud mudland basically, like just marshy whatever. So Davy's like walking miles and up and down the way for like he said he's there about about an hour and, and he couldn't find what he was looking for. And he came back and there was like five five bikers there. And as Davy came walking back, he went, You were so close, son. You were so close. And Davy went, What? He went a couple of times there, mate. Honestly, seriously, you were that you were about that away from what you're looking for, right? And Davy's going, You've sat there and you've watched me sit in the bed like an idiot for an hour and a bit. He said, you've then let me walk another mile and a half back to tell me I was really close. So you know what it is then? The guy went, yeah. He went, you might have... I'll tell you what Davey said, right? I know, tell me. Me. <laughs> Whatever. So the guy's going, right, you keep walking and we'll tell you where to go this time. Do you know what I mean? And then Davey found it. But I just thought it was funny where you could just imagine like Davey sitting and going and the guy's going, he's, he's nearly there. Oh, he just walked past it. <laughs> you know I, it's your it's <laughs> old boy cold syndrome. Mind that, you know, or you're cold, or you get warm, or you get hot. Your nose uh, gets on, or you're cold again. Right? Uh, you know, but I think it's sometimes, that, but again, I, I'm... I'm fortunate because obviously I knew Davy and, and like the, I would class Davy as being a historian, um, and a lot of like the stained glass glass windows windows in Falkirk. I mean, it was Davy. It it showed me them, you know. Um, so I feel sometimes I'm doing things where I'm I'm being Davy, if that makes sense. Where you're going to buy? Have you seen the? Footage? No, I've just seen. Oh, come on, I'll like, 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 I'll show you whatever else. Um, so I find that quite strange, but. 
it is. It's, it's like you walk past things and, you, you know, if you don't know, uh, I mean, there's a place in Glasgow as well where Bonnie Prince Charlie was um, in the Merchant City. And there's a yeah. little plaque there. And on the plaque, it says, this is where Bonnie Prince Charlie stayed. The amount of people that walk past that every single day, I mean, got a clue what that is. They've got no idea what it is. But no, you're... You're spot on what you're saying about history. We've, we've found that quite a bit. Look at Edinburgh. Aye, uh, Ed, that was Edinburgh. Um, that's what we done last year. Last year. Aye. The, the darkest mile. Yeah, and yeah. it was all, about, I mean, everybody goes to Edinburgh, you know yourself. Yeah, they'll go to Greyfriars, go to the castle. Which is, you know, we've done it ourselves yeah. many, many a time. But there's, a bit, must, I don't know how many closes are up and down the Royal Mile. And each one's got history, even the gold bricks. That are in, you know, running about the, the cathedral. People mm -hmm. probably walk through them every day and don't have a clue. And it's not their fault, you know, I'm not speaking bad against them, but they probably don't have a clue what they bricks represent. You know, that's for the old prison. That's the outline mm -hmm. of the old prison. The heart of Midwodian, The heart of Midwodian, which was the, the entrance to the prison. That's where the, the door sat. But yeah. people walk yeah. through it every day and, but, you know, they don't realize it. And but, that's how. We did that. It wasn't the best thing we did, you know. It was the first ever attempt. No, but it is though. I, I think things like that, though, Scott, I think is important, and I find it, I find it embarrassing, really, that, that, that as a country, Scotland, you know, with what we've got, you've got history, you've got, you've got Wallace, you've got Bruce. You've got, I mean, that's, our history is amazing. I mean, it's full of darkness and, and sort of whatever else and backstabbing and, and, and sort of Aye. in the whole works. But our history is amazing, you know, if you really get involved in it. I mean, it's really, really interesting. It's not boring at all, do you know what I mean? So we've got that history. You know, you've got, you know, you've got kilts, you've got plaid. You know, if anybody, if you go abroad, you've got a kilt on, everybody automatically knows you're Scottish. You know, it's something that, that, that that's so much, it's, it's massive, you know, haggis, everybody knows that Scottish, you know, back, like, back, like people here that are, are a bagpipe, it's like you're Scottish, you know, people, it's, you know, whether you're Portuguese, Spanish, they, they all know that. But, you know, then then you get, oh, it's the old, like, sh like, like, uh, sh like, shortbread mentality, whatever else. It's not. There's nations that would die for the stuff that we've got that you can market. Do you know what I mean? And I just think sometimes it's this... <sighs> Unionist side of things that we need to be embarrassed with with the stuff that other countries would die for. They have that. No. Do, you, do, do you know what I mean? But we do seem at, to be embarrassed about it. You look at pipe bands. Take pipe bands, for instance. You know, um, you go to any country in the world and they've got a pipe band somewhere. You know, yeah. bagpipes and all well, the, the toys and whistles. You know, where it's Spain, Canada, wherever, and. Um, Majority of your pipe bands, and it's all. And as soon as somebody hears a pipe band, where it's in London or Sky, or they stop. And what was that? You know, the, the ears automatically prick up. And there is so much history in Scott. Aye, ninety percent is quite. You know. Like, oh yeah, very much, so. <laughs> oh, very much so. I do all the blood and guts and stuff. Um, yeah, iron brews and gingers and all. You're uh, Scottish. Iron brew. You know, you're doing, you're doing England. We've got a lot of friends in England who say iron brew and up oh, iron brew. You know what I mean? Um, but I uh, history, it needs to be looked more at. You know, this is this is why we're doing the kind of Wallace show because let's face it, but I, I was guilty of it as well. Every scene brave part, you know. I yeah. don't know every day, but a lot of me yeah, most of it, most. Part. And bang, you know, they, they associate that with the story of all you've done. That's what he did. You know, some you know, the, I think the general outline of Braveheart is through what he, you know, what he represented. If you, yeah, I mean, if you, if you, if you, if you go the main parts, he was born, his wife was killed, legend states, you know, he, he did win the Battle of Stirling Bridge, he did lose the Battle of Falkirk, he was hung, drawn in quarter. That's all true. A wee bit in between that are a bit <laughs> jiggery pokery, whatever else. But at the end of the, the the main parts of the actual film are actually spot on. Um, obviously, the princess is not right because I think the princess, if I can remember correctly, all fine was about eight at the time. So that bit's rubbish. Uh, Edward II, obviously, he's portrayed as being gay. That's true because he, he was gay. So that bit's true. Longshanks didn't die before Wallace. 
uh, Longshanks died the 7th of July, 1307, so he died two years after Wallace died. Um, so, so there is quite a lot of it which isn't really true, but it's a Hollywood film. You know, I mean, I've always said that, you know, it, it's not staying, this is a documentary of history of William Wallace. It doesn't say that. It's Braveheart. <laughs> this is a Hollywood film. What the heck do you expect? You're expected to be as close to history as possible. But hey, it ain't happening. And Braveheart as well isn't even to do with William Wallace. That's to do with the Bob the Bruce and the black, the black, the black uh, Douglas, whatever. So even, even the name's not in any to do with the uh, William Wallace. But again, I, I'll I'll never slag the film off because, as I said, without it, you know, I'd probably say before Braveheart came out, probably being a bit, bit above average, but I'd probably say about 30 to 40 percent of the Scots would have known who William Wallace was before the film. The film came out, and like I'd say 99.9 .9 percent of people know who, who William Wallace is because of that film. And then you maybe then went to watch a documentary about it, you know, if Dr. Funny Watts is in it, or Davy's done a few as well, or they've been out, they've bought. They've bought a book on it, you know, whatever. So the, the film I've got no issues with, and I'm, and I'm a great believer as well. I mean, I'm I'm 57 years of age, uh, and I've changed from from when I was 18. You know, you, you do. You, you learn by the mistakes you've made, and you move on. Oh, I won't do that, that again. You then became a better person, and then you move on. And I believe a country's exactly the same way. Um, I, and I think that's why... The Scottish history side of things um, was taken out of Scottish schools because, as a country, if you don't know where you went wrong, then how can you improve as as a country? Because you don't know where you went wrong because your history's not 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 being taught, and I think that's massively important. And anybody that I know that obviously not getting involved with politics, but anybody that I know that that, that wants Scotland to to go on its own all know their history. You know, they all know what it is they're talking about. And that's why I think history then gives you the knowledge of your own country. Do you know the Saltires, the the oldest flag in the, the in the world, whatever? Most people wouldn't be able to tell you that, you know, through the Battle of Atherton Ford. So, you know, things like that with Wallace, what he did, you know, and the one thing which I like about Wallace, and he's different to like Bonnie Prince Charlie and sort of Robert Bruce to me. And it's not because I'm Obviously, the convenience society, White Moss, it's not, it, it's not, I'm not saying this, this because of that, but Wallace was like one of us. He was like us. It's like me standing up there going, right, let's go and invade Westminster. Do you know what I mean? It, he's, he's just like one of us. You know, Robert the Bruce was the king. The king shouted, jump, you said, how high? You know, if a clan chief said, jump, you said, you shouted, you said, how high? You know, whereas Wallace was the, like, you know, Wallace was just one of us. And I think I that's awesome. what, gives them that, you know, that it could be any one of us. Do you know what I mean? I'm not, like, sort of born in any royalty where you can then get a country to go to war or whatever, whereas Wallace did that. And I think that's what gives him the added edge and makes him more uh, appreciative within the Scottish people, I think. Aye, exactly. Because he was, as you say, he wasn't a king, he wasn't a, a duke, he wasn't anything. He was just, you know, a normal, everyday man like us. But he managed to win over a nation. He managed to uh -huh. make an easy problem to stand up against a king. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and and that's, and, you know, that's what me getting into Glasgow say, right? You know, no offense, we're going to right, we're going to invade England. Let's go. Mm -hmm. I'll just look at you and tell you about okay. <laughs> you know, for <laughs> some reason they all of them. You know, uh -huh. and but that but that's that to me is the bit where I think when I try and delve more in into Wallace as like a person, whatever else it is that you know, he talks about the fighting and brave art and whatever else. But I think the main thing that, that people forget about with Wallace is a, as I've said, he wasn't a king, he wasn't a clan chief, so he he must have been an infectious type of person. You know, he must have been charismatic. He must have been very persuasive. Uh, type of person with regards to how he like brought across what he wanted people to do, you know. So I, I think sometimes people sort of don't look at the like who the real William Wallace was. What was he like? And he must have been all of them. 
you know, to be able to get, you know, not standing up going, I'm the king, let's go and fight, I okay, let's all go. You didn't mm-hmm. you didn't second guess that, you just that's what you did. Whereas so for so for Wallace to stand up and get a whole nation to actually rise and go with him, it I think it says a lot for him. He must have been like a charismatic type of person. And probably I mean, unfortunately, like sort of Davy's passed away and Davy was like that. I mean, I said to you at Camp with Kenneth, um, if Davy was in Camp with Kenneth, Davy could talk, and you'd expect Robert the Bruce like to walk through that door at any moment. You know, Davy, he, he just got you so it, it, it's someone about him that when he spoke, I mean, if Davy did a talk about everybody else, see at the end of it, and he said, right, do you want to invade? You'd be going, hey, okay, big man, I'll just go and get my sword there, let's go. You know, because because he got you so. <laughs> Involved, well, it, 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 yeah, you know, and and Wallace must have been like that. I mean, and David was a big guy as well, like Wallace was imposing on you as well. So he must have been that type of person to get people like to go and join him. And I think that's why the Scottish pop, you know, obviously the way that that he was murdered as well, sort of doesn't sort of really that 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 helps him as well. I think, and I find it really weird where. Like Longshanks, I think there's only one one monument to him. I think, as far as I'm aware, which is in Borough of Sands. There's loads to William Wallace all around the world, you know. And when we're in in West in Westminster, we we'll go up to his coffin and just have a wee knock on it. Still here, Eddie. Still here, and then just walk away. Do you know what I mean? People I remember him. What, what was it? You know what? What did did they well, have? a nation hollow. I, I, I think it's probably a little bit passion it's a, yeah I mean it is I mean Scotland don't, I mean I, I mean I say this all the time right and I've, I've said a, a, a few speeches and it, it, it sounds stupid right but we are nuts as a country I mean if Scotland are playing at tiddlywinks I'll watch tiddlywinks I know nothing about it but I want the Scottish guy to win because he's Scottish do you know what I mean? If you watch anything that he's Scottish, I want to watch it. Do you know what I mean? It's true. You know, and if you if you watch, uh, what was it? Um, is, uh, Britain's Get Talent, and it was the McDonald brothers that were on it. And they were, did you mind them? They were crap. They couldn't sing, they couldn't play, they were rubbish. But we all voted for them, because they're Scottish. Do you know what I mean? There's McDonald brothers on, absolutely rubbish again. There we go, where's the phone? Ding, 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 ding. Let's get them through. And they were on for about seven weeks that they kept getting voted through. Crap. You know what I mean? But it's just that sort of it's 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 something that we've got. And I mean I've lived in England for seven years. They don't have that. You, you know, they'll watch somebody if they like them, they like them, but they won't like them because they're English. You know, they won't like them just purely because of like they're English. But whereas for us, if you watch it, anybody, you know, whatever they're doing, sport tiddly winks, even if you're watching some stupid programme, like, I don't know, pointless Scottish guys on it, I want a Scottish guy to win, you know what I mean, whether it's, it, it, it's just someone that we've got, um, so I think what you're saying right, it, there's totally right, it's, it's, it's a passion we've got and maybe the Scots and those, because John John Bailey that Willie Walls fought in the name of John Bailey wasn't really that type of guy and I think it's a shame with John Bailey because he does get a bad rep at times he was just born in the wrong era. I think if John Bailey would be maybe born a couple of hundred years later, he probably would have been a successful king at the time. Um, Edward II, again, born in the wrong era. You know, if he was born another hundred years later, a couple of hundred years later, he'd have been actually a, a, probably a good king for England. Um, but Longshanks came in and he was at the right time. He was fighting against the French. He was like evading people left. And he was that type of guy, just not particularly a nice person. But if he was like born in, you know, you know where everything was like fine, there was no fighting, and you know, you're building castles or, or monasteries or, or churches, whatever else, he possibly wouldn't have been a great king at that point. So he was born in the right era for what England needed at that precise moment in time. And I think with Wallace's point of view, he probably came up and he was there at the right time. You know, I, I mean, William Wallace was training to be a monk. I mean, we should never have known who like William Wallace was. We, we should never have known who the guy was. Um, and I think that's why uh, he, he is so 
redeared because of that. And I think the, 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 the other scary thing, which I do find out with Braveheart, and I, I do get, obviously get involved with fights, and I was in the pub one, one night, and you know, I had a bad day at work, right? And I just went in for a quick pint, and I was going home, and my mate was speaking, just sat down, and I was, my mate sitting speaking to this other guy, talking about Braveheart, right? And she was about you saying, oh, please don't involve me in this, mate, because I can't really be bothered to just, just, just let me out of this one. Just you, you keep doing what you're doing, I'm no interested. And... Uh, then, then these guys like that go and speak to Gary, mate. He knows I'm going. Oh, I don't need this, and he's going. The guy's going. Yeah, Braveheart's rubbish. Went, oh, I don't actually agree with that, mate. I actually think I, I actually think it's a tremendous film, and he's going. Yeah, but history, like historical wise, it's rubbish. I went. Right, okay, mate, that's fine. I said I know what I'm talking about. You obviously do do as well. Then, what parts are no real? Then, did you tell me? Did you tell me? You tell me it's no real. That's fine. You're entitled to your opinion. You tell me what bits are not real. And he went, eh, it's a good question. I said, I could because somebody's told you it's no deal, but you don't actually know, do you? And then he went, eh, Robert Bruce and uh, William Wallace weren't born in the same era. Ah, right, okay then. I said, well, Wallace was born, we don't know when Wallace was born again, another <laughs> issue that we've got, uh, but he was born between 1270 to 1274. Now, we, we know that. And Robert Bruce was born in 1274. So, so don't want to sound bad to you, big man, but sounds like the same era to me. Right. I, uh, and he's going, no, 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 no. I said, well, if you think about it, I said, William Walsh was murdered in 1305 and Robert the Bruce was made King of Scots in 1306. So that's the, the next year, mate. Same era. And the guy stood up and walked it. You know, you're talking crap and walked it. And then I, I went in the pub two weeks later and I was dropping a couple of books off for one of my mates. <laughs> And the same guy was sitting in the corner and I just opened the book to the page. I just went, oh, I mean, I'm already did that, pal. Just bring it back whenever you're finished. You know, so I, I think I think with, with with the Braveheart side of things, I think because the, 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 the English establishment are still absolutely petrified of William Wallace, I think there was the the there was a significant issue as to why they were going down the route of historically it's not right, blah de blah de blah, to try and get people to to take a back seat and not get so involved in it. And I think that was that was intentionally done, I think. Um but that again is backfired where you know people were going out and reading the right story. So they were reading the right story and they but again with the like the likes of the guy in the pub, he he'd read that somewhere. He'd read that in the Daily Record or the Daily Mail or something like that. All right. So, so that's so that stayed with him. But he didn't. He didn't know why. He didn't know what parts were not true. He just read it, saying that it wasn't true. But he couldn't actually have an argument with it because he actually generally didn't know. Do you know what I mean? And I think that's where, like, your media can can be a massive thing. And I think the likes of what we've got now. I mean, I know when we tried to get the Wallace letter back, um. It took me probably five years for a paper to actually take it up. Papers wouldn't touch it with a bar spell. They just wouldn't touch it. You know, nobody, I just speak to journalists, you know, speak to Glasgow Herald, Sun, Daily Record, you know, every major, like major paper, trying to get them involved in it to try and publicise what we were trying to do. They wouldn't touch it with a bar spell. They didn't want to know. And that's the sort of thing that, like, with the society, but, but then now you've got, you've got the advantage of Facebook now. You know, you've got Twitter now, you know, so you can get out what you're trying to do. If you want to do a crowdfunder, you know, you put it on Facebook, you know, people will share it and, you know, whatever else. So I think that's the, that helps us and and, and, and gets us out to know. And, and I think even like with websites now as well, if anybody's coming, I mean, I'd be disappointed if I was an American and I came over to, to Scotland for Wallace and, you know, and, and came, came to Stirling. To go and look at the Wallace Monument and then go back to America, it's cost you, I don't know, five, six grand to come over here, but not know that 150 yards down the road, Legend States, William Wallace's arms buried there. Or, Aye. you know, the actual bridges down there, you know, there's a salt tire there now, you know, there's, there's like there's plaques there now, you know, if you walk, if you walk over the old bridge and look, look down, you, there's a good chance you'll see the bridge, depends what the weather's like, a bit like. When 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 we went up Scott, it was like right. too the water was too high. But you know, so that's things that's on it's on our Facebook page, and we put it on 
our website, it's on Twitter as well. So it means that people that are going down there, you know, they'll, they'll maybe look at that and go, I ain't they bother, let's go and have a look at that. So that's someone else that somebody will be able to find now because you've got you've got that. Um, so that's, I think, like a lot of what the society do is just, just to try and educate people that if you're at an event um, or, or you go to the Wallace Monument, you know, if you go right, you know, if you if you look at if you go right up to the top and you're at the actual Wallace Monument itself, so you're facing that. If you turn right and then walk right to the right, and you need to watch where you're going because it's really dodgy. But if you get to the end bit, that's where Wallace and Andrew De Maury stood on the battle on the day of the battle in 1297. Now, unfortunately, I, that, that I know that. But if you think of the amount of people that actually go to that Wallace Monument, how many people will actually go there? Because they won't know it's there. Do you know what I mean? And if you're going there, you're going there for, for a reason that that's why you're going because of Wallace. Right. I think it should be marketed a little bit better uh, with regards to that. Now, in fairness to, to where Wallace and Andrew DeMori stood, I can probably appreciate why they don't do it because if you slipped and fell down, you're dead basically because it's, it, 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 it's like that. So I can probably appreciate why they don't do that, but why they don't promote Cam with Kenneth is beyond me. And even that day that that we went up there, I mean that the two Spanish people that I that I spoke to obviously came over from Spain. They wouldn't know. You know, and even when you're saying to them, you know, you know, if you're speaking to somebody like from Spain and whatever else, then you're then going on that that's William Wallace. The first thing you say to them, have you watched Braveheart? You know, when we start the film she went, yeah, you watched Braveheart. The guy William Wallace, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's his aunt buddy there, mate. Oh, thank you. you know, so you know, even for anybody that's foreign, I, I mean, I mean, one of our one of our friends that um, uh, that, that we speak to all the time and, and comes over to, to to Scotland, whatever else, is for Lichtenstein. You know, and Lichtenstein's in the middle of no, not in the middle of nowhere. It's, it's right beside Switzerland, whatever. But he he loves Scotland and he loves Wallace, and that's because of the likes of Braveheart and you know, so. And, and if you ever speak to Patrick, you know, his passion for for Scotland's amazing. I mean, it is. I mean, sometimes I speak to Patrick and I, and I just think he's Scottish. Do you know what I mean? Because he's so passionate. And you're thinking, I can speak to a couple of guys in Glasgow tonight who probably wouldn't have the same amount, amount of passion for the country they were actually born in than I, you have. You, you know? Um, and so for the film itself, I just think it's amazing. The history, as I said, the history of, of Scotland... It's probably a bit annoying with Braveheart as well to a certain extent with it because the history of it is good enough itself. I mean, it it, it made a tracking film if you did the real story. You, you know what I mean? But it's Hollywood, you need to have a wee bit romance in there, which is why the Queen was there and, and, and all the rest of it, whatever. But I know, and somebody told somebody told me this, um, that, that, that we were, we're doing the film of Braveheart and... Do you know the bit where Mel Gibson's doing Sons of Scotland, I am William Wallace, William Wallace is seven feet tall, he's, 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 doing all, he's doing all the speech. If you actually watch it again and listen to the horses and watch the horses, right, because the horses can smell testosterone, you know, male testosterone, they know what's going on, they, they know there's an atmosphere, horses, horses know that. So the guys all there, they were all they were all hyped, they were all hyped up to hell, whatever, you know, they actually thought it was a real thing, do you know what I mean? And then when it got to the bit where he's going, will you fight against that? And the guy's supposed to go, no, we'll run him. They all just went, I the <laughs> watch just charged whatever else. The director guy's going mental. No, 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 come back here, come back here. We need to start again now. But but if you watch the horses and watch them like breathing, they know there's something going on. And it's because all the guys are so hyped up for what is, you know, it for like sort of for this film. Um so again, it's another thing within the actual film itself. If you watch that part, because it's not something you'd you'd probably pick up on. You you just watch it. Do you know what I mean, I mean I've, I've watched Braveheart. I don't know how you made it. I've watched Counting Mouse, but I love the film. You know, mm-hmm. um, and that's something I would never ever notice. To be honest with you, I, yeah. I, I, but I'm going to watch it later on. I'm <laughs> going to go with that. I'm going to uh, put it on. And I'm going to go with that bit now, and I'm going to get a watch. You know what I mean? Aye. Um, if, if, if you see the horses, it's mental. And I think the one, the, the one thing I don't like about it is it does portray Robert the Bruce as not being a particularly strong person. And that's total rubbish, because Robert the Bruce was obviously um, a strong king and a strong person. So that bit, and, and again, people think that, that, that 
that Bruce portrayed Wallace, which is again people would automatically assume that, which is which which is rubbish. Um, again, it's as I said, it's See, this the, is part of the, the issue with Wallace. Uh, I think the, I said with the Wallace jail because there, as you say, there's a lot of history. No, 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 it can't be snake, can't be snake, and I've just said that there. <laughs> <laughs> Campus Ken. Campus Ken. Campus Ken. Yeah. Um, as you say, not a lot of people know about it. And so that's why I want to feature it. And the Wallace Trail, I, the idea behind the Wallace Trail is to get bits out there that people don't know. Mm -hmm. You know, they don't realise, you know, this has happened with the, the Bell of the Brave, what have you. Or, so this happened, you know, this is allegedly happened here. Um, <coughs> the campus Kenny people probably drive by it every day. Go over close. But this is in the place. And mm -hmm. I'm not saying we're going to reach the millions, you know, but if oh, we but get a little call and get it out there and say, well, you know, this is here, this is what, you know, is supposed to have happened, etc., etc. See if there's one person watches it, at least just all educating that one. Person. Well, I think one person yourself. It's, it's, because because at the end of the day, if you educate if you educate that one person, they'll tell somebody else, then they'll tell somebody else, and then they'll tell somebody else, and then that's you know that's where it all goes, you know. And it's just it, it's I think with Wallace, as I said, I find it hard at times with regards to what we do that again but that's because the establishment's absolutely petrified of them so it does make it a little bit more difficult I mean as I said like the Bell of the Brave took us seven years to get that built safe conduct letter took us seven years um to get back and you just rubber eared rubber eared away you go stop annoying me stop annoying me um and that's what makes it that little bit more difficult as I said, things like this now, you know, where you can do YouTube videos, whatever you you get, you get Facebook, you get Twitter now. That makes it that little bit easier to get things out, and people are aware of what you're actually trying to do. Whereas before, before these things come, and I think it's, I think the scary thing is because what when we did walk for Wallace in two thousand and five, Facebook had just kicked in then. Now I would have liked to. I always imagine in my head, because I'd probably say about 1,500 of us turned up. Mm -hmm. uh, and if Facebook had kicked in, say, three years prior to that, we'd have got it out to a wider audience, if that makes sense. Right. You know, people might go, I never knew about that. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm going to that. You know, so I think there would have been more more people there than actually went because we didn't have a wide radio audience. The papers weren't really up on it. Media-wise weren't really up on it. So it was only like our little like forums and things like that. So it was all people on like the same wavelength and whatever else. We couldn't really get it out to the general public as such. And I think if Facebook had say maybe kicked in about two or three years prior to that, I think there'd have been a heck of a lot of more people a, there. A bigger base and you say word them out, you know, word them out. To me, word them out is the greatest form of advertising. Yeah, very much so. You know, you can spend thousands on magazines or you know, whatever you want to do, um, but word of mouth is the greatest form, and it's free. Right? And, and the scary thing with Walk for Wallace when I came back, and every newspaper said a couple of hundred people turned up to it, and my friends were saying, Gareth, I thought you told me that, that there's going to be thousands there. I went, I, there was. Now, it was back in the day where you didn't have mobile phones and all that. You know, it was like, it was a camera. <laughs> I had to get my camera, right. get the stuff developed to come back. And I went into work and I showed the people the photos. I went, that looks like more than a couple of hundred people there, doesn't it? And they're going, Jesus Christ. But that's what the paper said. There's only a couple of hundred people. A couple of hundred pa like patriots. There was, there was 300, I mean, the actual church held 350 people. And there was people outside. I mean, the church, the church was full and it, it was a ticketed affair and you couldn't get in without a ticket. So... In the church held 350, so there was more than a couple of hundred people. There was more than a couple of hundred people in the actual church itself, anyway. And the actual march throughout the whole the whole of London, um, it, 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 it was massive. But you know, I, I, again, how how the the media portrayed it was a couple of hundred people turned up because they didn't want it to be classed as a big thing. I think we've got a cat that's missing. I think it's turned up. That's where Laura. Laura's uh, I think they're away. 
we had the Tom the Allen. Um, I think he's turned up, so I do apologise for him just kind of disappearing. Um, <laughs> okay, we're going to wind it up there anyway, but I'm just noticing the Huggies for a noon o'clock. So Wednesday. Yeah, um, Wednesday, 7 to 7.30, Scott. A, a, a big game. My words are away to hell. A rough <laughs> run down. Um, what's, Wednesday, what's happening Wednesday? Well, basically, it's just, it's just a commemoration. So the couple of speeches, uh, the, a couple of songs, um, a minute silence for Wallace. Um, and it's just good to go to uh, like Rob Royston because you've never been to Rob Royston before. Um, it, it is a, it's, it, it's a cracking monument uh, for a start. Nip down to Wallace Well. Again, legend states that that's where Wallace took his last uh, water. That's there. That's all cleaned up as well. Um, and I know boys have been up over the weekend to get it all up and running, get the grass cut and sort of whatever else. So it's all, it's all fit, fit for Tuesday. So it's just it's just a couple of speeches, mate. We're trying to get a paper, so ho- hopefully we'll have a paper there. Uh, we'll finish off with Scott, Scott Swahey at the end of it. So it's not... Rob Royston for us has never been a massive thing. Um, we, we, we just, things that we, we looked at it to try and get it bigger, but it was too close to Wallace Day. Falkirk's usually a couple of weeks before that. So it, okay, again, it all comes down to money as well. Um, so, you know, of course, people go, you know, if you're going to a night event at Falkirk, then in a couple of weeks' time, you're going to a night event at, at Rob Royce, and then a couple of weeks later, you're going to a night event at, at sort of Wallace Day in Eldersley. Um, it's, it, it, it's expensive. Um, so Aye. Falkirk, we just we, we just do a day. It's a whole day thing at Falkirk, um, which is done by the Sir John de Graham Society and ourselves. Rob Royce has always been quiet, and the good thing that we've always done with Rob Royce is if you want to do a speech yourself, Rob Royce was always where most people did their first speech because it wasn't that it wasn't that sort of busy, if that makes sense. So. Confidence wise, it made it a little bit, you know, there wasn't, you know, you weren't sitting in front of 350 people. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> like, so I go, God almighty, I'm not going to speak for it. Yeah, and, yeah. So, um, with, with Rob Royce, it was always that's where most people did did the first speeches and then you moved on from there. But there was never, usually maybe, maybe 15, 20 people will, will turn up to it, which is all we're looking for. Um, Wallace Day this year again won't be that many people here this year as well because we we, we made the decision that we weren't too sure how things were going to go on with COVID and Wallace Day takes us a year to organise it and I didn't want to be involved in a situation where you put all that time and effort into it and then it came to Wallace Day and it's going we need to cancel it you know we need to cancel marches and you know whatever else so next year uh, Wallace Day will get back to what it was. We will do the March with Jones and make it a massive event again. So that's that will be for next year. Whatever still in uh, with the lights, I'll come back to you in that. I think that's been delayed from what I've heard. I'm waiting for I'm waiting for somebody to come back to me on that one. I think, I, 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 I think I think I think there's hassle with that. So if you leave that with the Scottish students, I find out for definite. I'll definitely let you know. But I'll, but I'll I'll see you Wednesday between seven and seven thirty, mate. Yeah, yeah. So we'll wind up there. I'll just give you for a wee second, Gary, after we come off. Um, so we'll wind up there, folks. So a big, uh, a massive thank you, Gary, for the Society of Wally Wolf for coming in tonight and having a, a chat. Uh, no we, problems, we're back on, we'll be back Wednesday night live. Um, should be live maybe at 47 or 7 o'clock, but we will be posting the exact time um, up when we we'll meet up with Gary and um, the Society at uh, Rob Royston in Glasgow. And we will be doing it as we will be covering it as a live. I never know, maybe there'll never be one with Gary, maybe many interview about that evening. But we're going to leave it there, people. And um, again, thanks very much to Gary for coming in and everybody who watched. And uh, we'll see you on Wednesday night. We will post the time. It should be at the Rob Rubik quarter six, seven or something. Doing about that yeah, time. Be- so. Between seven and seven thirty. Yeah, make sure you put your dinner on your cup of coffee. <laughs> All right, so we'll talk to you soon. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Bye.